In this video, we're going to take a look at how to sketch quartics. Now, to sketch quartic, we adapt the same method that we use to sketch a cubic. And the idea here is that we want, again, a function like we've got here in fully factorized form. And that is true for this example. However, for some examples, you might have to factorize, um, say, a quadratic yourself so that you've got it in fully factorized form. Now, the good thing about having an expression like this, our function in fully factorized form, is that it allows us to easily identify the solution, so where it cuts through the x-axis, and then the y-intercept. So we can easily identify the solutions here by looking at our individual factors. So the first solution here is x equals minus 1, x equals 3, uh, sorry, minus 3, positive 3, and positive 1. Okay, so that's where it cuts through the x-axis at these four points. We also now need the y-intercept. So if we imagined expanding these four factors here, then what we'd get is something of this form. So f of x would be equal. So that would be ax to the 4 plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. Okay. Now this e term here at the end, that's our y-intercept because the y-intercept occurs when x is equal to 0, so all the other terms here are equal to 0, and we get left with e. Now, we don't actually have to expand all of these factors here. We can simply um, evaluate e by multiplying 1 by 3 by minus 3 and by minus 1. So 1 times 3 times minus 3 times minus 1. In that case, we're going to get 3 times minus 3, which is minus 9, times by minus 1 to give us positive 9. Okay, so we now have the y-intercept. We have our solution, so let's just mark all of this down. So minus 3, minus 1, positive 1, and positive 3, and our y-intercept here of positive 9. Looking something like that. Okay, now the only thing left to consider here is the general shape. So to get an idea of what this is going to look like, let's just consider the coefficient of x to the 4. So x times x times x times x would simply give us x to the 4, where a is equal to 1. So in this case, what we've got here is a positive quartic. And our general shape will be this kind of funny looking w shape. It's going to look something. Uh, let's try it again. So let's just get rid of this. It's going to be a w shape. It starts in the top left, this quadrant here. And it will finish in the top right of this quadrant. So it's going to look something sort of like that. We've got this W shape here, these two dips. Okay. So we start in the top left. We're going to come down. We have this dip, come back through, go through the wine steps here at nine. And we're going to come back down again through one and then back up through three. So let's have a go at sketching this. I'm doing this freehand on a tablet. It's not the easiest, but we'll see how it goes. So we start in the top left, go through at minus three. Back up through minus one, come through at nine, um, go back down through one, and then up through three. So that should be three there, like so. Like I said, mine's definitely not very neat. Um, but as long as you've got this general shape here, that's all that we're really looking for. So let's just mark down um, our intercepts again. So that's minus one, that's minus three, that's positive one. And that's positive 3. Okay, and it cuts through the y-intercept, or the y-axis here, at positive 9. Okay, we're going to have something that looks like this. Like I said, make sure yours looks a little bit neater. Okay? But there we have it. So that's our solution to the first example. Moving on to the second question now. What I've got here again is my function f of x. And like we can see, we've got our product of factors here. Now, this one looks a little bit different because we've only actually got, well, we've got technically four brackets, but we're only expressing three here. The reason for that is because one of the brackets is squared. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that instead of it being a squared term, I'm going to write that as a product of two factors. So f of x here, what we've got is x minus 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 1 times x plus 1 again. Okay, x plus 1, and finally, x plus 1 again. Now, what I need to do from here is identify the solutions. So the solutions, remember, we just take a look at the individual factors. We've got x equals 3, minus 4, and minus 1. 
Now be careful here, we've got this x plus 1 twice, so what that actually means here is we have a repeated root at x equals minus 1, this solution here. Okay, so we've got minus 4, minus 1, and positive 3. Okay, let's say that's there. Now we also need the y intercept, so that's e. And we can get that by multiplying these um, integer values in this case together. So minus 3 times 4 times 1 times 1 again. Okay, which is actually in this case just going to give me minus 12. So we get minus 12 there. So it cuts through the y axis at minus 12. Now, all, all that's left to consider here is the general shape. So multiplying the x's together. So I've got x times x times x times x again. And we get x to the 4. So it's a positive quartic, and that means we can have this w shape. Okay, something like this. So we're going to start in the top left and finish in the top right. So we start in the top left, come down through minus 4, go up through, oh sorry, go up to this minus 1, but remember we brush, from, brush off this minus 1. So let me just try and redo that again, make it look a little bit neater. So we come down through minus 4, we curve back up, remember this is a repeated root of minus 1. We just kind of torch the minus 1 and brush back down. We now go through the y-axis at minus 12. And then come back up through 3 there, okay, on the x-axis. And we can identify our solutions here a little bit clearer. So minus 4, minus 1, 12, oh, sorry, minus 12, and positive 3 there, okay. And that gives us a sketch of y equals f of x there. Okay, giving us a solution to the second question. Moving on to the third question now, again, I've got my function f of x here. So let's identify the solutions because it's already in fully factorized form. So x is equal to positive 2, negative 3, negative 1, and negative 5. Okay, so that gives us the solutions here. So let's just note those down. So I've got minus 5, minus 3, and minus 1. And it cuts through at 2 as well, so let's just note that there. Now we also need e, which is where it cuts through the y-axis. So we can get that from 2 times 3 times 1 times 5. 2 times 3 is 6, times it by 5 is 30, times it by 1. So we just get 30 there. So it cuts through the y-axis here at 30. Let's just say that's there. Now we need the general shape here, so I've got minus x times x times x times x again. It's going to give me minus x to the 4. Now we just need to be careful here, so this is a negative quartic now. So in that case, rather than getting the w shape we do for a positive, we get the m shape. So it's a reflection in the x-axis essentially, so it's going to look something like that. Okay, we get this m shape if you can notice it here. Bit of a funny looking m, but that's the idea. So that means we start in the bottom left and finish in the bottom right. So let's have a look at sketching this here. So we start in the bottom left, go up through minus 5, come back down through minus 3, go up through minus 1, make sure we go through the 30 here, and then we come back down through 2. Okay, and we should get something that looks like this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a general sketch of our curve y equals f of x there. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution to the third question. Moving on to the very last example now on sketching quartics, and we have our function here f of x. And the good news is it's already in fully factorized form. So from here, we can easily identify these solutions. So x is equal to minus 5 over 2, x is equal to 1, x is equal to 3, and x is equal to 2. So let's just note um, our solutions down here on our axes. So I've got 1, 2, and 3. And we've also got minus 5 over 2. So let's just say that's, I don't know, let's just say that's there. Minus 5 over 2. So that's minus 5 over 2. Now we also need the y-intercept, so that's e. And how do we obtain e? Well, remember, we just take the last term in our brackets here. Oh, sorry, not the last term, but the integer value. So 5 times by minus 1 times by 3 and times by 2. So 5 times by minus 1 times by 3 and times by 2. And it's just important to note here, these don't have to be integers. Um, if it was a fraction, say 1 over 2, we would still times it by 1 over 2. So just whatever that number is inside the bracket.
Okay. 5 times minus 1 is minus 5. Times by 3 is minus 15. Times by 2. And we get minus 30 there. Okay. I'm going to cut through at minus 30. So the only thing left to consider here is the general shape. So 2x times x times minus x times minus x again. So 2x squared there. So 2x times x gives me 2x squared. Times by minus x, we get minus 2x cubed. And if we times it by minus x again, that will give us 2x to the 4. So we know we're going to have this w shape here, something like this. And we're going to start in the top left and finish in the top right. So we start in the top left, just come down through minus 5 over 2. We go through minus 30, and then we're going to come up, go back down, and then back up again. So let's try and put all this together. Um, it might be a little bit easier if I just move this minus 5 over 2 across a little bit. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just so the sketch looks a little bit neater. Let's see there. Just down the top left. We come down like so. We now go up through 1. We get our curve here, and then we come back down. And then we curve back up and go through 3. Okay. And it's going to look something like this. So this is y equals f of x. Notice that we go through all the points that we mentioned here. So that's minus 5 over 2, 1, 2, and 3. So 1, 2, and 3. And we go through the y-axis at minus 30. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to the final example. So that brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at transformations.